Wellness with Paul Rosen. Our diets, our Western diets in America are just really, you just don't realize how poor they really are. What would you say to others who would like to feel better? Sometimes you need to find the instructions. That's where the testing and everything comes in because without that knowledge, there's no way I could have got to the point where I'm at today. Straight talk about health. And then I start preaching and telling them what I've been doing. (laughs) And this guy named Paul Rosen has changed my life. With your host, Paul Rosen. By the way, the information contained in this program is not approved by the FDA nor intended to treat, diagnose, or claim to cure any medical condition or disease as defined by Western medicine. However, Skilled practitioners of many disciplines have found nutrition response testing to be a highly reliable, supportive technology for assessing the health and fitness of the body's functional system. Okay, well, let's talk uh, about um, uh, some of the most common skin conditions that people experience. Uh, Acne. Uh, even dandruff, simple dandruff is um, an interesting one. Dandruff Eczema. is considered a skin condition? Yeah. That's a surprise to me. Is it? So acne can also Flaking be something... Flaking skin, falling on your shoulders, your earlobes and your shoulders and whatnot. Hmm. So I've never <clears throat> thought of dandruff as a skin condition. Well, but there you have it. Could it be related to the others you've mentioned, such as psoriasis, eczema, Well, or they're related in the sense that they're skin conditions. Well, but do yeah. they have, you know, is there a domino effect? If you have one, do you have the other? No. So you've got acne, very common, as I said, dandruff, eczema, psoriasis. These are some of the most common skin conditions. And um, uh, it, it is thought... Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out some of the some of the common, um, you know, speculation with respect to uh, causes um, and also some of the common, uh, you know, treatments that 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 people are directed to undergo. And then I'm going to talk about the actual real solutions to many or, uh, you know, of these conditions um, uh, utilizing A very different approach. So that tells me that people are using the wrong treatments often for their skin conditions. Is that right? Oh, yeah. So I'm going to guess that's going to include ointments and all kinds of other stuff you can buy, you know, over the counter. And and there are a million of those. But what about very simple solutions just like common lotions and things like that? Those can't necessarily be harmful, can they? Oh, they can, especially if you're using, you know, corticosteroid creams. For example, they can be, um, uh, you know, set up for uh, uh, for all kinds of side effects. Antibiotics is a common treatment for um, uh, many of these chronic stubborn skin conditions. Um, Accutane was, and perhaps maybe still is, unfortunately, um, you know, all but guarantees birth defects when you're using them. The antibiotics, of course destroy the microbiome, which is the the term that has been coined to describe the uh, uh, all of the, the the flora, the the bacteria, the the viruses, the the uh, uh, funguses, the whatnot that basically occupy our bowel and do many good things for us as well as could be harmful if they get out of balance. Corticosteroid creams, as I suggested, basically um, have been uh, connected with stunting growth in children, uh, conditions like osteoporosis. They also, of course, suppress your uh, own steroid production, which helps handle uh, things like infections and trauma, muscle weakness, diabetes, increase in triglyceride levels, body bulges like eyes, upper back. And trunk um, raises blood pressure, causes weight gain. Gee, I sound like one of those one-minute drug commercials, don't I? Yeah, you do. And I had no idea that these side effects could be so serious. Absolutely. Absolutely. When you use suppressive methods of treatment, side effects are all but guaranteed. Not all of them. You won't experience all of the side effects, but... You you uh, will experience one or more, and if you use these suppressive treatments chronically, 
that is over an extended period of time, um, you know, you, you wear out things like your adrenal glands, which in turn create things like more fatigue and more stress. And you get in the chicken and the egg situation. Right. You're in an endless cycle. And an endless cycle of degenerating your body's ability to maintain normal function. Um, You folks, listeners out there, um, you know, are going to be waiting for me to drop the magical ointment or the magical supplement or the magical cream or the magical, you know, whatever. There is no such thing. There's no such thing. The magic is in your own body, your own body's ability to heal itself. So what you have to know is how to unlock the key so that that magical system will basically do what it's always been potentially able to do. So what I'm hearing here is there's really no quick fix. If you have a serious condition like this and you're trying to use ointments or creams or even some kind of prescription medication, that's not necessarily going to be the instant solution that you want. Well, everybody's fix, everybody's reaction to what I do, providing a nutritional healing program, may be a, a quick fix. But highly likely not so, especially if you've been suffering for, you know, a number of years uh, from this, uh, primarily because you've also probably been using some of the most suppressive treatments available, these suppressive, you know, creams and antibiotics and so forth. And so a lot of the effort goes into restoring, uh, you know, a, a, uh, a healthy body or healthy mechanisms to be able to uh, access that, you know, magical healing or those magical healing properties of the human body. So how do you do that? How can you make your body, in effect, heal itself? The first thing is, is you have to undergo a, an evaluation. And that evaluation um, has to be something different than the blood work, the skin work, the hair work, the urine work, the bowel work, all of the chemical tests that um, uh, is, is most available and, and, and most known by people because that's what we do in Western medicine. We've, we've decided that blood chemistry rules the roost and it's going to get you where you want to go. And the problem is, is you've got, you know, uh, hundreds of thousands, perhaps even millions of people out there who are scratching their heads trying to figure out why they're still suffering because those chemical tests have simply not been able to pinpoint why they're suffering from the psoriasis or the eczema or the acne or the um, uh, dandruff or the whatever other skin condition you might be experiencing. So I would think if you're a chronic sufferer of rosacea, for example, adult acne or psoriasis or eczema, you might be willing to do just about anything, A, to relieve the pain. Certainly eczema or psoriasis have a lot of that going on, but also your appearance if you have rosacea absolutely, or any of these other conditions going on with your body. That is going to, I think, have an effect even on your mental health, how you react to other people on a day-to-day basis, how you conduct business, because you're so concerned about your appearance. It's totally true. And the reason I do this show is to uh, uh, let people know out there who have tried and failed so many of the conventional and even um, uh, some of the alternative approaches that they allowed themselves to participate in, that there really is a solution. It's just that you have to step out of your comfort zone and um, uh, uh, participate in something that I call, uh, you know, applied kinesiology or muscle testing, and just be open to the possibility Now, I have listened to one of the testimonials we may hear later in the program. I've already done myself a sneak preview, and one of your patients said, 
he had eczema, I believe, over 85% of his body, something like that. Mm-hmm. It was a huge percentage. Mm-hmm. And not only did that weigh on his appearance and his overall health, but he was in pain very often. Oh, it can be very painful because imagine, uh, you know, having an irritation on your skin. You've got to wear clothes, generally speaking. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it can be all time consuming for an individual, uh, you know, and, and, and and what I want those people to know is that there really is a solution, right? But as you indicated, for those people, you know, most of the time, you're not going to see just an immediate turnaround by, you know, making a few changes, lifestyle changes. It's going to take some time to overcome the insult of the prior treatments and then to overcome the... Uh, uh, nutritional deficiencies and barriers to healing, which we identify via an evaluation providing a personalized nutritional healing program. And to take care of those things requires some persistence. It requires some commitment. Absolutely. Well, let's say, too, you're suffering from one of these conditions. Can you get temporary relief from some kind of cream or lotion while you're seeking a more long-term solution. There are a number of things that can be done in the interim while we're working on the root cause because antibiotics don't treat the root cause. Creams don't treat the root cause. Any other type of, you know, uh, approach like that doesn't treat the root cause. The root cause lies in... I'll give you an example, and this is a, uh, some very interesting information that I hope you know, lights a little fire under those who are suffering from these chronic skin conditions. You have to understand that the skin is the third kidney. No, I don't think I've ever heard, I've never heard that phrase before. The skin is the third kidney. And And why is that? Why? Yes, why is that? Why is the skin the third kidney? Because the universe made it so. Okay, I'll accept that. Yeah, um... And, and the skin is the largest organ of the body. It's an excretory, respiratory organ. We breathe through our skin. We excrete toxins through our skin. And there is a connection via the kidneys to our skin, via the thyroid to our skin, via the liver to our skin, via the bowels to our skin. So when you're looking at an abnormal condition of chronic inflammation, what you're really seeing is not just a local irritation or inflammation of the organ skin. You're seeing something going on inside, something involving your kidneys, something involving your thyroid, something involving your liver, something involving your bowels. And in the case of uh, 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 lupus, which often is reflected in a butterfly rash around your face, right? The spleen is involved. Now, what do these, all of these organs, for example, the kidney, liver, bowel, and spleen have in common? Right? They're, they're filtration organs. They filter various substances in the body. The spleen's involved in filtering the lymph system. The kidneys are involved in in actually filtering the whole body, but in particular, um, pulling things out, creating the urine that we have. The bowels, obviously, is where a lot of our digestive uh, uh, system is in, uh, takes place. And absorption of the useful nutrient density that is squeezed out of the foods that we consume. <clears throat> and the liver filters out the blood and also produces bile and has to do with uh, uh, processing sugar and so forth. So all of these organs, and the thyroid connects them, is connected to all of it. The thyroid is the endocrine gland that's connected to all of it. So whenever we're, whenever I am working with a person who has chronic skin conditions, we have to find out what is annoying one or more of these organs or gland. 
And putting on a cream or utilizing antibiotics or utilizing corticosteroids both internally or externally doesn't have a chance in you-know-what to be able to address any of these organs or glands. In fact, all they do is undermine them. Now, I've proven this in the clinic, and we're going to hear from, I believe we have time. We do. We're going to, have, we're going to hear from, from Chet, who had this experience. He's the guy that you, um, that you were referring to, you know, my patient. This is just one example, but Chet was willing to be uh, interviewed, and not all of my patients are. They, you know, not everybody wants to uh, go public with their experience, but Chet was willing and at the beginning of this, I should point out, I think we're going to hear Chet's wife. Yeah, Chet and his wife. Actually, his wife came to me for some other things first, and then Chet decided after a long bit of rumination, you know, maybe this kinesiology approach uh, would be useful. Let's hear him. I, as I recall, there was something else that happened, too, and that was that you were really concerned about your husband. Yes, my husband was suffering from psoriasis. And this was an ongoing problem for for quite a period of time. I think for eighteen years. Eighteen years. So you you uh, after you seeing results, you uh, mentioned it to him, and and perhaps maybe there was a little reluctance at first, but ultimately he did he did uh, decide to take the leap, and um, and for that we've got Chet Epperson right here, and and so uh, Chet, what what was your experience of the evaluation? Okay, Paul. Hi. Uh, it was a good evaluation, and of course, you kept saying, uh huh, and you're going to be surprised what you hear, which when it came out, I wasn't really all that surprised because I suspected a lot of things. And after 18 years of suffering from psoriasis, of course, it starts out small and it just gains and gains and gains. Uh, it got to a point uh, this January that uh, I had to do something. I was probably 85% covered. It was bleeding. I couldn't sleep nights. It really hurt. Uh, I was back on to UV treatment, and I've had all kinds of treatments prior, and I thought, well, can't lose. Well, what, what, what kinds of treatments actually had you had for this? You say this is an 18-year condition. So what, what sorts of treatments were you, uh, you know, d- did you get for this problem? To start with, it was minor, so I had topical applications, different uh, uh, ointments that were given, and I put them on with small success. Uh, It was livable. It was small lesions here and there, and they came and went. That worked fairly well for probably eight years, and then it got worse and worse, and then uh, I went to see a dermatologist again, a different dermatologist, and they started me on a UVB treatment, which had quite a bit success. Uh, it brought it down probably 70% successful, but it never did clear. And uh, so we switched to a PUVA, which is a UVA treatment, and you have to take meds before the treatment, and they kind of upset your system for a while. Uh, it did a lot better took methotrexin along with it. It brought things down to about 80% success. And that was about it. But that's livable after you've had it really serious. Uh, it no longer really itches so bad it drives you crazy. So now you can live with it. So that's kind of acceptable. And I did methotrexin for a while, but it started to upset my system. I started getting tingling in my left arm and I started getting cramping in my neck. And I went, now the this is not good. I'd better quit. So I did. And the dermatologist says, you're lucky because sometimes it doesn't return back to normal. So basically what happened was, is you took these things and it appeared that you were getting uh, uh, some success because the symptoms were disappearing. And yet, you know, little by little, here comes the creepy little side effects. And, uh, uh, and like, like the doctor says, you were lucky that, that, that you stopped in time and things sort of started to return. But of course, once you stopped the drugs, what happened? Well, I stopped them, and all of a sudden things flared up seriously, and it got real, real painful. Uh, it's like you're bleeding all the time. It's like you have road rash. It just it, it hurts, and at night you can't sleep well, so now it's time to get serious. So I started the uh, UVA treatments again, 
Uh, we also tried a series of Zamaviv before that, and it was it's a new drug on the market, and it was minimal successful. Um, it didn't really give me any side effects, but I didn't think it was worth trying a second one. It's like a $14,000 uh, treatment, and it you know it's serious. Uh, so my wife had been coming to you for a while, and I thought, well, let's try this. It's Nothing else is really working, and it can't hurt. Well, now there's an issue. There's an issue, too. He talked about the expense of other treatments. Yeah, some made. of the treatments that might might be offered are enormously expensive, but... You know, his his situation is just not uncommon. You you wouldn't believe how many people out there actually do have, um, you know, severe chronic skin conditions that just seem to be, you know, implacable. You're just not addressable. And as we said, know, this man was in a lot of pain in addition to everything else. Well, because else. of that, yeah, because he also had to work and, and part of his work, you know, caused him to sweat. And sweating, of course, you know, aggravates the whole uh, you know the whole condition dramatically. Let's let's uh, let's uh, you know go and and hear the rest of it. I think I think people would be interested to hear what happened. Here's part two of Chet's story. So so basically, you got the evaluation. I mean, this is and I know I know uh, you know the the uh, folks out there. I know that there are many of you who are suffering from psoriasis. I mean, this is like this is one of the most common skin problems out there, and taking drugs and you know, hoping to get things better, but experiencing side effects, certainly like, like Chet has. So we did the evaluation. We, I indicated exactly what you needed to do, and what was the result? Uh, I started the, the, the program, and within three weeks, it was just about gone. I was still doing the UVA treatments, uh, which I was doing three times a week to start with. I brought them down to two times a week. I brought them once a week, and then I quit them. Uh, and today I'm just about totally free, and I have no problems. Uh, it's great. So, so basically, but the uh, just just to be just to be clear, the uh, the UV treatments actually uh, you you had stopped uh, sort of prematurely in the process, uh, noticing that the improvement was so dramatic. Uh, that you wanted to see if if uh, you know there was what was doing what right exactly but it's kind of scary when you've had that much psoriasis to quit a VOV treatment that you know helps but all of a sudden it just it's like the treatments before never reacted like this in three weeks they were gone and I'm going and every morning even today I wake up looking at myself going is it back is it back it's not back am I lucky. <laughs> And and I can tell you, folks, that he's a little teary-eyed talking to me about it because I I I mean when 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 this kind of thing happens, you know, it it appears it it seems like it's a miracle. But the bottom line is, it is just simply your body at work. You find out what the hidden health problem is, what the missing piece is, and your body does the work. So we have a we have a man sitting here who uh, is is essentially clear save maybe a, a spot on an elbow or so uh, where his body was anywhere between 85 and 95 percent covered. Um, and then he visited his dermatologist. And I, this is a very interesting thing, and I want you to talk about this. So you visited the dermatologist. This is after you're totally clear, uh, you know, of what you've been experiencing. And, and what, what, what happened there? At first she looked me over and she was really shocked that I was clear and she had known how bad I was two months before that. And this really doesn't really happen. And as I, I was going out and talking to the nurses, one of them made a comment like, we don't lose patients because they get healthy. <laughs> we don't lose patients because they get healthy. Well, I mean, I, I'm, you know, I, I don't know. I'm like, I, I don't usually get speechless, but I'm, I'm sort of speechless. So, but let, let me ask you this. If, if, I mean, for anybody out there who has been suffering for, you know, any length of time, whether it's with the blood pressure or, or the psoriasis or with pain or with any other types of things, what, what, what would you suggest? Well, I'd say come on in because uh, everything I've tried, uh, I wouldn't stop what you're doing because if it's working or not, that's one thing, but I'd come in because this does work. Uh, I was really skeptical at the beginning. I said, well, I'll try it, but I really don't have much trust in it. But guess what? It works. 
a happy ending to that story. Here's uh, something else ending. we're going to be covering, <clears throat> Paul. According to who who has the information, whoever statistics you want to believe, 43 to 75 percent of Americans on the job say they're sometimes too fatigued to work. Wow. We'll talk about that more in just a moment here on Health Matters. We will. This is Paul Rosen, and you're listening to Health Matters broadcast every Sunday from 10 to 11 a.m. We'll be right back. Okay, according to some research, Paul, it appears that our Twitter habits may be making us more fatigued, also more anxious and more depressed. According to one psychoanalytic organization, our social media habits are making us more neurotic. Do you believe that's the case? (laughs) Um, Well, if you look at the sales of uh, antidepressants and anti-anxiety drugs, if if that is any reflection of, um, you know, people's overwhelm, Maybe there's something guess to I it. Would, guess I would say yes. Well, these <laughs> statistics relate in particular to the workforce. And again, as I said a moment ago, 43 to 75 percent, that's a broad range of people. That many people may be having fatigue on the job, and it may be related to their social media use, among other factors. Oh, I, I, I would imagine, you know, anybody who's trying to make a life for themselves in some respects um, you know, in our civilization is experiencing fatigue on, you know, more than one occasion, you know, ask most people and they'll say, yeah, you know, I'm doing it, but I've got to, I've, I've got to force myself to get up in the morning and, uh, you know, do my thing, get my coffee. I need my, I need my stimulant in the morning, my coffee, my tea, my, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. Well, there's that. That's a factor too, the artificial yeah. stimulants. But yeah. in addition to that, there's just the pace of our lives. The fact that we lead such fast paced lives these days, especially on the job where competition is often intense. You have to work very hard to stay ahead. And I think social media in some industries such as this one is an essential ingredient now. So you have to stay on top of that. And if you're in <clears> front <throat> of a screen for X number of hours a day, I think that could contribute highly to stress and fatigue. Oh, absolutely. And and the 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 often misunderstood or overlooked part of this is the toll that it takes on our organs and glands within our body, in particular uh, the adrenal glands and the and the thyroid. Um, and and whenever someone is experiencing skin conditions where it where it combines with fatigue. You know, you can you can you can put money on the fact that those two glands are in trouble and and need uh, some support. But the issue here is what kind of support and how do you find it? Right? Protocol approaches miss so many individuals because, yeah, I mean, you know, if you've got a recipe, it's going to work for some folks. But if you want to, if you want to uh, uh, basically help the overwhelming majority of people, you've got to recognize the uniquenesses of each individual. And, and, and each body has its own keys, and you need to uh, uh, find those keys and unlock the magic within and the magic within is your body's ability to both normalize, in other words, when something isn't regulating properly, to restore that regulation, and to restore the, the, um, uh, the health to the organs and glands. And believe me, just taking supplements won't do it. It just won't do it. If you've got something like eczema or psoriasis or, or acne or, or uh, lupus or... Um, anything that any other chronic skin issue you you've got as i said earlier and this is really important this is the takeaway i believe it's the recognition that your thyroid your kidneys your liver your bowel and in the case of lupus your spleen one or more of those is in deep trouble and no chemistry examination will reveal what that trouble is <laughs> 